Hi, today I'll be showing you how to make a beautiful walnut and maple chessboard. The first thing I did was cut my maple and walnut boards to 18 inches. This will be long enough to make a chessboard with 1 and 3 quarter inch squares with a little bit extra. I then went ahead and joined one edge on all my boards so that I'd have a straight edge to rip my strips. I chose to cut mine on a bandsaw so I'd have less waste, but you could also use a table saw. Because the bandsaw leaves a rough edge, I cut the strips at a little over 1 and 3 quarters inch so it could be planed down to the final width. You should have 4 walnut strips and 4 maple ones. Once I had all the edges cleaned up, I glued them together alternating species. I chose to glue mine in two sections so I'd still be able to fit it through my planer. I then cleaned up the surface by planing and glued the two halves together. Next, I squared up one end using my sled. I then set a stop block at one and three quarter inches and tested it with a piece of scraps to make sure it was exact. You want to double check the width of your strips to ensure that what distance to place the stop block at. Once I had my block dialed in, I went ahead and cut out the strips. For the glue up, all you have to do is rotate every other strip 180 degrees and you'll have your checkered pattern. When clamping these, do your best to line up the edges because you won't be able to straighten it out much without losing the square shape. While it was drying, I began working on the maple portion of the border. I cut four of these at just over one quarter inch and 15 inches long.
After planing them down to one quarter inch, I cut a 45 degree angle on one side. Then took it over to the chessboard and marked where to cut the other side. I did this for all four of them. It helps to mark which maple strip will go on which side. I then glued on two of the sides, let them dry, and then did the other two. You don't need to do this, but I found it easier. You should also note the importance of doing a test fit before gluing. I didn't video mine, but I did have to make a few adjustments. One thing that might be helpful is taking these strips down to the same thickness as the rest of the board before gluing them on. I then started on the walnut portion of the border. These were cut at 19 inches and then ripped into four strips at just over an inch and three quarters. I then planed them to their final width. Next, I repeated the same steps as I did for the maple border pieces. Again, make sure to do a dry fit first. You can see I already had mine clamped on how I wanted them. I then removed two of them to glue on while I left the other two to help align them where they needed to be. Once I had those secure, I glued on the other two. The board was then run through the drum sander to clean and level off the surface. Don't worry if you don't have access to a drum sander. While it certainly does make things a lot easier, you can do the same thing with a belt sander and some patience. I then routed my edges to give my board a more appealing look. Always make sure the piece you are routering is clamped down so it won't move. This was followed by lots of sanding with my orbital and edges I sanded by hand. Finally, I applied a brushed on poly. I ended up doing four coats, but only videoed the first one.
After all that work, this is what you end up with. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down in the comment sections. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more videos like this. Thanks for watching.